Hello, and welcome to our module on present level of performance. This is our team. I am Jennifer Gleason. I am an education specialist. And if you have any questions um, about this content, you can reach out to any one of us, and we are all very happy to talk to you. So this is our contact information. This is a link to the procedural manual, which we will talk about a lot today. And it is a very good document when you're for any forms, IEP, eligibility forms, any of that. Great detail in the procedural manual. There is a um, PDF of this PowerPoint right below us. Um, and you can click the link in that to get the procedural manual. So page 24 of the procedural manual talks about academic present level of performance. And page 25 talks about functional and developmental present level of performance. We're gonna kind of talk about them as one because all the same rules apply, whether it's academic or functional. So the first thing we're going to talk about is that present level of performance is a required field on the IEP. It's a must fill. And this is an IDEA requirement. So if you have a student who only has functional gaps and functional goals, there needs to be a statement in that first academic present level stating that the child doesn't have any academic needs or they're on grade level or they're academically commensurate with their peers, something, some kind of a statement in that very first present level. Um, and I know depending on who your vendor is for your forms, it might be a little tricky. You might have to create that goal and then just fill in the present level and leave the goal blank. So same thing for functional. Um, required. So if you have a student who has academic gaps, but no functional gaps or goals, same thing. You need to put a statement in that very first functional present level stating that they don't have any gaps or they're on par with peers, something like that. So we're going to start off today talking about Andrew F. Um, so if you haven't heard this before, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the Andrew F. case went to the Supreme Court at the end of 2017. So it started out, Andrew F. was a child with autism in a public school. And basically his goals were carried over year to year and he was not making any progress year to year. In between fourth and fifth grade, his parents had had enough and they rejected his IEP and they enrolled him in a school that specialized in teaching children with autism. And lo and behold, he started making progress. So the parents filed due process to get reimbursed for that placement. And prior to this case, the um, precedent was the Rowley case. And Rowley said that um, any progress is progress, merely more than de minimis, that's okay. So based on that, the hearing officer found in favor of the school district because any progress is progress, doesn't matter. So the parents appealed um, and all along the way, the district court, the appeals court, everybody, found in favor of the school district because merely more than de minimis. And they appealed all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, no, every child should have the chance to meet challenging objectives, which are calculated um, such that the child can achieve them in a year, right? In light of their circumstances. So this kind of changed the way 
we need to think about writing our goals. So when you're writing your goals, you're looking at that present level, which is very specific data, which we'll talk about. Um, and you're really calculating what can this child achieve in one year, right? So you don't want all your goals to just be, you know, with 80% accuracy or something. You want to really think about what can this child achieve in a year so that you don't have to carry those goals over and over. That doesn't mean that you're not working on the same skills for more than one year. I was a functional life skills teacher in an SPPS. My kids learned really slow. We were always working on skills for more than one year. So really think about, okay, their present level is, you know, 20% independence with this skill. Maybe we'll write the goal for them to get to 30%, right? And then next year, maybe the goal will be to get to 40% right? You want them to be able to achieve those goals within one year. So you're really the, your present level data is real important so that you can use that to calculate those goals. And also use your data. Um, if you're just collecting data and saving it on a shelf for um, progress reports, that's not enough. You need to really look at your data often and you need to use that data. It will tell you if this child is not picking up what you're putting down, not their fault. We need to, as teachers, we need to change the way we're presenting it. We aren't presenting it in a way that they understand. So we need to change that, right? Your data will tell you that. So use it. You don't wanna be stuck in that Andrew F situation. Um, and end up in due process. So really use your data, calculate those goals, use that present level data. So we're gonna talk about that now. So this is the blurb from the procedural manual and we're going to take it literally one sentence at a time, but not in order. So present level of performance should be understandable to all members of the IEP team, and that includes the parent, right? So you're not going to use your standard scores. You're not going to use, you're going to use really plain, basic baseline data that is understandable to all. The present level is aligned with each skill gap in sections 4C and 4D. So all of those skill gaps you have listed, if you list them in a bulleted list, makes everything easier um, and you don't have to type as much. Um, so for each skill gap that you list in section 4C, 4D and actually 4E, you get a present level and a goal. So your present level is your baseline data for that skill gap. Your present level is aligned with the goal immediately following, right? So. Each gap gets a present level, gets a goal, one to one. If you have, if you list four gaps up in section four, you have four present levels and four goals corresponding with that specific skill. And the essence of what present level of performance is, it is your baseline data for that skill gap. That's all it is, your very specific baseline data. So you're going to use the same data point right? Your present level is your baseline data. You're using that same data point to measure your goal, right? And then you're also using that for your progress monitoring. So this is a very specific data point for that very specific skill gap. Present level is not subjective. Struggles with um, often, sometimes, um, about 30%, approximately 20%, between 50 and 70%, um, less than 40%. You don't want any of that. Really be confident in your data. Oh, I added all this approximate stuff in here too. So just said that. Um, so really specific baseline data point, even if it's a new student to you and you only have time to do a quick probe, that's your baseline data. At this point in time, 
this is where they are, right? I did one probe, they're at 43%. You put 43% in there. Present level, uh, bleh, present level of performance is not multiple skills and it's not the prerequisite skills. It is the baseline data for that specific skill. So if you are talking about, um, let's say adding two digit numbers, often we will see um, in the present level, student can add one digit numbers with 100% accuracy. And then the goal is student will add two digit numbers. So that's the prerequisite skill, but it's not telling us where, what their baseline is on that goal of adding two digit numbers, right? That's what we wanna know. Um, unable is fine. We will read that as zero. Student is unable to add two digit numbers. Um, student has not yet begun to work on two digit numbers. That's a 0%. That's valid. Um, but it's not the prerequisite skills. It's the baseline data for that specific skill in the goal. Present level of performance is not grades, grade level, standard scores, or percentile. Again, think about that progress monitoring. You are progress monitoring all the time, right? I looked at my data daily, but I'm a little nerdy. So um, you should be at least looking at your data weekly. Um, grades, very subjective, multiple skills involved there, grade level. Um, and standard scores and percentiles, you're not gonna use those um, eligibility evaluations that give you standard scores for your progress monitoring, right? You wanna use really specific data collection. So this is something that just came up um, from Perry Zirkel's April update. So this is new um, and this jumped out at me in this, um, this is a case law, this is a court decision. The court identified various defects in the IEP, including outdated data and vague language. So this goes back to our, you know, Susie struggles with decoding CVC words. That doesn't tell us anything. It's not baseline data, right? That's your vague language. So this is a case where um, the language was vague and that affected this court decision. So really be careful with that. So what kind of data can you use in your present level? You can use skill-specific curriculum-based measurements. Just make sure you're pulling that specific skill out right? You're not saying reading level B, right? You're going to pull out, maybe you're looking at fluency, you're going to pull out um, words per minute with level of accuracy for fluency, right? So um, data that kind of transcends the specific curriculum, if that makes sense. Um, you can use qualitative data through teacher observation, checklist, running records, work samples. You can reference a rubric. If you reference a rubric, that rubric becomes part of the IEP and you must attach it. Please do not use eligibility or evaluation data, which we talked about, goes back to that progress monitoring state and local assessments, grades or report cards, or specific curriculum. You want it to, you want the IEP to be able to transfer with the student if they change to a different school or even a different case manager, right? You want it to be understandable to everyone, understandable to the parents, understandable to a new school or teacher. So um, really specific. And this slide kind of talks about that. Um, this is a made up um, reading program 
and you could see level three is fluency at 83 words per minute and comprehension 85% accuracy. Level four, 90 words per minute and reading comprehension 92% accuracy, right? Those are two different skills. So if you just say present level is student is at level three and the goal is to get to level four, there are a lot of skills that go into that, right? What if their fluency goes up and then their comprehension goes down? Then what level are they at, right? It's not measurable. This would require two different goals and two different present levels, one for fluency and one for comprehension, because we want those goals to be that specific. Each goal gets is one skill gap, right? So you would list up in section four um, gaps, reading fluency, reading comprehension, and then you would have a present level and goal for each. And we have an example here. So this is a math example. So this student has gaps in addition with regrouping as well as single digit subtraction. You could see we have our how statement there. So our present level, right? The student solves two digit addition problems with regrouping in 0% of opportunities. You could see we're not listing the student can solve two digit problems without regrouping, right? Because that's not what the goal is. We want that baseline. So we want the student to be able to solve two digit addition problems with regrouping in 50% of opportunities over five consecutive presentations, right? So we're going from zero to 50. We're not going to 80. We're not going to 100. It's really going to be calculated based on what that specific student is able to achieve in a year. And you could see our progress monitoring on the side uses that very specific data point as well. And our second gap was single digit subtraction. The student can solve single digit subtraction problems in 40% of opportunities. And we want them to sub solve single digit subtraction problems in 80% of opportunities over five consecutive presentations. And we are using that same data point for our progress monitoring, right? All right, if you are having trouble determining your baseline data for a specific skill gap, really look at that skill gap. Is it is it really specific? Does it encompass multiple skills? Is it an outcome and not really a skill? Um, so really just think about that kind of that kind of thing. If you can't come up with a really specific data point, maybe it's not one skill. Maybe it's it's something that's encompassing more than one skill. So just to recap, your academic and functional present level is your baseline data. You want to avoid those um, vague statements. Often sometimes seems to kind of a thing. And your baseline data, your goal uh, measurement, and your progress monitoring all use the same data point. And for every gap in section four, you have a present level and a goal. So we have a little case study here. This is Walter. Walter is a second grade student with OHI. We have his evaluations and his strengths there. So this would be his um, section four. Right, we have his evaluations, we have strengths, we have gaps in spelling, writing fluency and written expression, and functional gaps in self-initiation and organization. And we have our how statements there. So our present levels, right? Spelling, writing fluency and written expression. So we have a spelling, he spells CVC words with 35% accuracy. He writes sentences with three words or fewer. And given a definition, Walter expresses the correct vocabulary word with 50% accuracy. So there's our um, present level, one for each of those gaps. So functional, we have gaps in self-initiation and organization. 
So our present levels are Walter initiates work tasks within 10 minutes with two adult prompts and 70% of opportunities. And the other one was organization. Walter seeks tools required for a task by independently retrieving or asking for the tool in 25% of opportunities. So you can see based on those present levels, both those academic and functional, you could see where the goal is going, right? You could see exactly what the goal needs to be. If that's your baseline data, that's gonna be the same measurement for your goal. And you can use that baseline data to calculate what that student can achieve in a year. So that is present level. We have links to resources, our PD calendar, which is brand new and much easier to navigate, our professional learning page, which is probably where you are now, where you got this from, but that is also new and much easier to navigate. And then we have um, resources. There are links to the procedural manual, to Muser, um, all kinds of things. And our um, contact information is up there as well. If you follow this link or the QR code, it will take you to our professional learning feedback and contact hour form. So if you just provide a little bit of feedback for this training, we definitely take that to heart and have made changes based on feedback. So be honest um, and you will also get a contact hour and um, a bunch of goodies will come with that. You will get a copy of the procedural manual, a copy of Muser, um, our upcoming office hours, a copy of the um, IEP quick reference sheet, there might be more things, but it's a whole goodie bag of things you get for um, filling this out. It's very short. And again, here is our contact information. So thank you very much for watching and please reach out with any questions at all. And if you are um, writing an IEP and you're not sure that what you're writing is compliant, you can email us, um, hypothetical, please don't send us a whole IEP or any um, identifying information, just send a hypothetical. If I were to write a present level and goal that looks like this, would it be compliant? And we are happy to give you feedback on that. So thank you again very much for watching.